Well, so first of all, I guess we should define what stochastics are. So the, the basic idea is, you know, given a certain time frame, um, you're looking at where the price is in relation to where it's been. So um, in the same way that we talk about like the closing range, you know, wh where's, where's the stock, you know, in its range for the day, um, you know, when it's on the upper part of the range um, versus, you know, the lower part of the range for the day, that's kind of what the stochastic is doing. It's just doing it over a, num a number of periods of time. So, um, and then you have kind of a, um, a smoothing of that usually. So you'll usually have a fast and a slow. Um, you'll have a uh, stochastic that's kind of a more reactive, but then you take an average of that. Um, so how do you use it and, and how much uh, weight, I guess, do you put on it? Um, I like using stochastics sometimes as a, as a quick screening thing, just to kind of see where something is uh, in terms of where it's been recently, um, especially because when you're looking for reversals and you're thinking, okay, you know what, I want something that has had some type of pullback, um, you know, then looking at things that are below 20 uh, on the stochastic is something that we can do. And when it gets back above 20 uh, on the stochastic, that's, that's kind of an area. And so think of that 20 as your kind of 20% level. Um, so that's, that's one way to use it. But I will say, that I, I don't just stick with that. I, I might use that to help me screen or to help me go through things very quickly. Because again, when something's like way at its high, it's above the 80 level, I might say, okay, you know what? That's a little extended for what I'm looking at right now. I want something that's had some type of um, pullback. Um, so it just helps me go through that real quickly. Um, but I mean, that, that's kind of the way that I use it. Uh, again, almost as a screening type thing. And I, I actually created some Excel uh, spreadsheets that would help me kind of identify things that had hit you know, different stochastic levels. Because again, you can change that time. You can do a very short period of time, say like a five day um, with a three day smoothing, or uh, you can have a, a longer period of time. You know, again, this depends on what period of time you're using for you know, are you a position trader where, you know, you're looking at a couple months holding period, or are you a swing trader where you're looking at a couple weeks um, of a holding period? For Farfetch, you know, you can kind of see, you know, again, very, very easily, you know, what was happening with the, the, the stochastic as it was pulling back, that stochastic was coming down, it got below that 20 level. And then when it got back up above it, um, that can often be used as a signal. Um, and you see that the, the, the thicker line that's your, that's your slow. And so that's the one that's kind of smoothing it out a little bit. Um, and so that's the one I usually go off of. A lot of times what we're doing is we're, we're looking at it, is it confirming what we're seeing, you know, on the chart? Um, and in this case, this is a, uh, what Justin was talking about, a five, one, and three. So it's a um, uh, smooth, smooth with three periods, I think. The, and, and because when you change it to five, one, three, then you just get one line. And typically when you undercut the 20 level, that's, you know, oversold. And when it crosses back over, that would be uh, the buy signal. You can also just uh, look at it on a trend uh, basis and say, okay, is it breaking the downtrend in the, in the stochastic? This is a much shorter term stochastic. And um, let's take a look at it on some others like, uh, maybe Palantir or something like that. And we used to use this a lot. Um, probably, you know, we use it less now than we used to. We just find that looking at the chart is probably the, um, the better uh, way to look at things. So this is a good example of Palantir pulling back. It's getting support near the um is actually near the the 10 week and so on this day here it just confirms what you're already seeing so you have the the pullback now it's uh reverses higher and closes above that high and you're seeing the stochastic cross above the 20 level which is like the typical um trigger so and, and exactly as chris said you know it's it's not necessarily that we're using it to say, oh, we got this cross, you know, now we can act on it. Because again, we, we can usually see that in the chart, but more mm -hmm. than anything, um, sometimes I'll be using this as kind of a screening. And in Thinkorswim, you can set up a scan 
Um, and, and yeah. you know, Chris and I did that um, and we're using those scans for a while. So you could put, you know, you could put in the IBD watch list um, or, you know, any list that you want and use that as your universe and then do a scan and see, okay, what, what stocks are, you know, crossing, you know, were below that 20 level and are now crossing above it. And that just kind of gets you a narrower list of if you're looking for a particular thing, um, it's an easy way to do it. So again, the, 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 the way I use it the most is as a screening uh, type thing. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching Investors Business Daily on YouTube. If you wanna watch more videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing.